Hey everybody, it's Cameron Time. I'm going to show you how to make OBS Let's in DaVinci Resolve and stuff. Hey everyone, so before we start off, I'm going to tell you the three things that you're going to need for this tutorial. A clean recording of your webcam in OBS, DaVinci Resolve 16, and this weird looking original.png file, which can be found here. To record this clip in OBS, you don't need any sort of crazy settings. Using the simple output mode with recording quality at indistinguishable quality and recording format at MOV will typically do the job just fine. This tutorial is not going to go super in depth on how to color correct because there are many other better tutorials for that, but we're going to go over the basics so that you know at least where to start. So in DaVinci Resolve, you're going to want to import you both your webcam clip and the original.png file. Right click your webcam and create new timeline using selected clips. When you open your timeline, you're going to have this media pool up here and you can drag the original.png right next to the webcam file. Then you can open up your color page and then this is where all the magic is going to happen because magic is wonderful. So when you go down to your scopes, you're going to want to open up this waveform and this is going to be the best way for you to be able to see all the adjustments you're making visually without relying too heavily on seeing what your monitor sees because monitors lie. So your lift, gamma, and gain are your primary exposure adjustments. Your gain is going to primarily adjust your highlights the most and your shadows the least. So you can see that actively happening here. And then your lift is going to adjust your shadow. <laughs> Your lift is adjusting the shadows the most, so you can see the shadows moving up and down the most, but the highlights are pretty much staying where they are. And then your gamma is going to adjust your midtones the most while affecting your highlights and shadows the least. And so you can see that happening right here as well. And then your offset's going to move your entire exposure up and down evenly. Also, it's typically a better idea to start with your gain and lift first and then your gamma last because you want your highlights and shadows to be in a reasonable spot before you start moving your midtones too much. You can also individually adjust your contrast and your pivot will position where that contrast will primarily be affected. So you can increase it and it will be either focused more on the low end or the high end. You have your saturation adjustments. And then if you click this tab over here, you can adjust your white balance, your green and magenta tint, etc. If you're more comfortable or used to using curves for adjustments, you also have that ability here. And on this curves tab, if you go down here to where it says soft clip, these are pretty useful, so if you push your shadows or your highlights a little bit too far, but you want to kind of retain that look without losing any data, you can adjust your low soft and your high soft. Don't know if that's the actual acronym, that's just what I made up. And you can bring this up and you can see these waveforms start to crawl up a little bit without affecting the rest of the image, but you still retain that detail. And same for the high end as well. To create new nodes, you just press Alt S or however you have it customized. And whenever you create a new node, that new node becomes a priority, so to speak, where it'll make adjustments on the current image you see here based on all the previous nodes you have. Shut up, Windows! You also have this tab called Qualifiers, and this allows you to make color selections so that you can fine-tune a specific part of the image without affecting the rest of it. So for example, let's say we wanted to bring down these blues. I'm going to make a new node so I can do these adjustments without affecting any of the other nodes. I'm going to make the selection. I'm going to press Shift H so that I can see just this spot. And I can also fine tune the selection that I have here. And now I see this is the only spot I'm using. And I can fine tune all of these. But for the sake of example, we'll just go with this right now. So let's say I wanted to bring down these, these blues because they are pretty intense and slightly clipping. I'm just going to go down to my saturation and turn it down just a tad, not too much, just so the blues stay intact. Now I can unselect and then to preview what this node looks like by itself, I'm going to press Control D. And you can see it doesn't completely blow it out of proportion and brings it down quite nicely without affecting the rest of my face. I just want to point out though. When it comes to creating LUTs in general, you can't use masks, known as power windows in Resolve, or blur effects. And this is because power windows and blurs are image-specific selections, not color selections. LUTs can only remap and adjust colors, not selections of images. Now I'm not going to fine-tune this image yet because of something I'll show you in a bit. But once you get your webcam to a decent looking spot, what you're going to do is click on the original.png file, and you're going to right-click on the grade that you've done and click Apply Grade. Now it's going to apply all the same adjustments that you just had, 
And there's two different ways that you can export this. You can either go straight to the deliver page. And what you want to do is select individual clips, format and TIFF, and render at source resolution. This part's key because the OBS lot has to be a specific 512 by 512 resolution. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And be sure to only have this timeline bar select the original .png. Then go ahead and select the file name and specify the location, add to render queue and start the render. Then when you navigate to that file, because it's a TIFF file, it needs to be a PNG file. So you're going to right click it, press edit and it should open in paint. Then you can click file, save as, PNG and save it to wherever you'd like. The alternative way to do this is to make sure you have gallery pulled up and go to your project settings. Under master settings, set your timeline resolution to 512 by 512 and then you can go up to view go to stills and grab still and that's going to put the grade into the gallery with this obs LUT. and then you can right click and export it and you can export it as a png file from there but you have to remember to set the timeline resolution to 512 by 512 before you make the still otherwise it's going to make the still in the wrong resolution so either one of these two ways will work it just depends on your preference and if you want to rely on remembering whether or not to set the resolution correctly. Otherwise, OBS is going to look weird. So what you're going to do to add this LUT is go to your webcam, go to filters, and then add the apply LUT effect, and then navigate to that LUT file that you created. And then open it and it should apply the LUT and look exactly like you just had it in DaVinci. And boom. Now, when it comes to the image that you want to put into OBS, whether you're using a webcam, DSLR, or mirrorless, you want to have as flat of a picture profile as you can. So for example, like with my Sony, as you see here, you can go to the creative style and either set it to standard, neutral, portrait, whatever floats your boat, and set the contrast and saturation to minus three, or if you're using any other DSLR or mirrorless, set it to a flat picture profile like so. And that'll give you the most room to work with when you're trying to color correct your file because it's much easier to expand your colors and contrast than it is to retract them because once... <coughs> oh boy, pizza's good. Because once your colors or your exposure goes past or below a certain point, it's not recoverable. So you want to have as much room as possible to work with. Either shooting in your neutral profile with the contrast and saturation as far back as it can go, or if you have, let's say, a Canon DSLR, you can download the Cine style profile or with Panasonic's cameras like the G7, you have Cinelike D, or you can just stick to the neutral profile if you prefer that. I've been told that Camera Tim is the best YouTuber in the world. If you have a camera that shoots in what's called a log format, log is a film simulation profile that makes your footage look very flat in technical terms. I'm going to show you this really useful tool to fully utilize the dynamic range of your camera. Don't forget to save and title your projects. So here in DaVinci, I've brought in a couple more examples. Uh, my camera records in S-Log. The last grade I did is not a good example of what it can look like. I just did it quickly. But I'm going to show you how this tool can make it look a lot better, much easier. I've also brought in a Panasonic V-Log clip, thanks to Sam. And I also have a Fujifilm F-Log clip for an example. So now that they've imported these other clips, I'm going to go back to this color page. And the tool that I'm going to show you is under the Open Effects tab, and it's called Color Space Transform. So I'm going to bring this Color Space Transform onto here. Now you're going to see a lot of this that looks like a different language, but your camera is going to give you this information. The two things that you're going to need from your camera are the color space and the gamma. If you look at my Sony here on these settings, you can see what the, the gamut is, and I know that I'm shooting S-Log2 as well. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to choose Sony S Gamut as well as Sony S Log 2. And then I'm going to change my output color space in Gamma to Rec 709 because that is the Twitch standard and that's the color space that they use. So depending on your camera and your log format, you're going to get a little bit different results. Sometimes it's going to look kind of like this where it's super contrasty, everything's blown out and everything looks like it's exploding. But it's okay because all this data is actually still here. So if I bring this gain down, you can see that nothing is actually clipped. All the information is still there. Um, so you can use the gain and lift tools on this initial grade to, to bring out all that detail back if you wanted to, and then create a new node and then start your grade again from there. 
But there's a bit of a better way to do it, in my personal opinion. You can also use this tone mapping and gamut mapping to bring the colors back to a reasonable level. So what you can do, usually setting this to simple is going to get you a pretty decent result as far as bringing the data back is concerned. And then your gamut mapping, I would suggest setting it to saturation mapping um, and then adjusting your saturation max here so that if you have any colors that look completely blown out and stuff, this will bring it into a reasonable level without making it look mushy. And you can set this number to a lower number than you would probably think because you're going to expand it back anyways. Again, it's much easier to expand colors than it is to retract them. So once that's in a decent spot, I can go ahead and do my exposure adjustments and start bringing stuff to a much better level. And even just doing a really quick and lazy job, that doesn't look quite half bad. Of course, I can do a little more refinements, but that's essentially what it looked like. So let's go on to Sam's clip because he has a much better example of this. So I'm gonna bring in his color space transform and I know he's using a Panasonic camera that uses V-Log. So I'm going to do the Panasonic V-Gamut as well as the Panasonic V-Log. Bring these both to Rec. 709. I'm going to bring the tone mapping method and the saturation mapping down. And some of those colors are a little bit blown out in the background. So I'm going to bring some of that information down so I can expand it out easier. So once I do that, I'm going to bring, his, bring the lift down, bring the gain up. So already, even with just quick adjustments, this actually looks pretty decent. That probably took like 30 seconds to do. And then onto the Fujifilm clip, I'm gonna bring in the color space transform and I totally forgot which one was the correct input color space to use and I don't have the camera on me. So I'm just gonna go with the Asus AP-1 and I'm gonna select Fujifilm F-Log and then Rec. 709 for both. I'm gonna bring these down. Now the saturation doesn't actually look like it's going crazy at all in this clip, so I'm actually not even gonna to touch the gamut mapping. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring the clips up and down. Now I get that this isn't a streaming clip, but I wanted to use different cameras so that I could give examples of what this could look like. And then of course, once you're done with your grade, you can just apply the whatever grade you want in the same process as before. So that's how the color space transform can really make your color correction job easier, especially if you're shooting a log and you really want to utilize that dynamic range. I highly suggest looking at some more DaVinci Resolve tutorials on actual color correction so that you can better understand how all of this stuff works. But hopefully this was relatively decent enough insight to at least get you in a good spot. If you'd like to see more videos like this, leave comments, press the buttons, and please let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. This is Camera Tim, signing out. Need to figure out an outro.